Okay, video number two. Who is the Antichrist? Okay, so we've established that the Antichrist has to be the fourth beast of Daniel. And that fourth beast is revealed to us in the New Testament when we are told that Caesar Augustus is ruling the entire world and Caesar Augustus is the Roman Empire or the Roman Emperor, excuse me. All right, so uh, there can be no question that the fourth beast is the last beast and then the end of the world comes. So the fourth beast being the Roman Empire, we saw the transition from the physical nation, uh, the physical empire, if you will, to a spiritual empire, which is known today as the Roman Catholic Church. Now this phrase, uh, 666, that we read about, uh, what was that, Revelation uh, 13 or something? I don't remember now. Let's, let's confirm that it's in the Bible. Because we don't want to assume what I'm telling you is true. Let's confirm it. Re Revelation 13, here's wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score, and six. And so in my opinion... Um, um, it's this vicarious Philly day, or however you say that. And these letters, that's a Roman word, and these letters add up to 666. And of course, they've tried to, since that's been revealed, they've tried to shy away from using that title. It's interesting because when I first searched this I searched 666 Latin phrase for Christ because I can't remember how to spell that and so <laughs> it's interesting because you, you scroll through here here and it doesn't give you Barkili, you know vicarious Philly day or whatever that is <clears throat> and in fact it actually points you to a different name Kaiser Neron uh, which is to imagine that, well, the Antichrist was thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago, however you want to look at it. Oh, oh, I didn't see that. So now it's not even 666, it's 616. So <clears throat> you want to say, okay, well, Vicarious Philly Dow, that, that adds up to 666. But what it really should say, just like what we read, in Genesis 3, let me find this for you. Hold on to your seat. Now, the serpent says, uh, and where's that at? Oh, right here. Very first verse. I, I'm sorry, I forgot. Yeah. Yay? No, no, that's not it. Yeah. As God said, the very first thing, and now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman, Yeah, as God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. He's getting Eve to question what God really says. So also, 600, three score and six, you... You type this 666 Latin phrase, yeah, has God said 666? Or did God say 616? All right, so anyways, I'm, I'm a little off topic here, but it, I just want to show you how ridiculous and what, ex, you know, what links uh, the misinformation is coming in just to get you to see anything but the truth that the Antichrist is living among us today and he's been here for a very long time and I will well, keep repeating this the futurist will tell you there's a coming Antichrist and I'm telling you you're never gonna see CNN and Fox News broadcast hey the Antichrist is here it's never gonna happen so imagine when Jesus comes are you gonna tell him no 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 the Antichrist hasn't come yet. You can't come. You're going to look pretty silly, aren't you? 
All right. And then on top of that, are you going to tell me this guy, the Pope, you know, wh whatever one you want to point to, yeah, they're all the same. You're going to tell me this is a true man of God. I mean, where are you getting this from? And look how religious he looks. Look how holy he looks. So that means he's from God. Come on. All right. So I mean, uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, you know, it's just like it says in Matthew 24, when Jesus talks about the Antichrist, he says that they shall deceive the very elect. All right. And to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. And that clearly means that it is possible for you to be deceived. I've been deceived. You've been deceived. Uh, that's just life, right? We go through many trials, many trials and tribulations. But the truth is always there, and whoever seeks it will find it. All right. Now, um, there is another thing I want to talk about. So we got the 666 is the title that the Pope uses. And what's by, what's this mean, vicarious? It, well, it means other than Antichrist, that the representative of the Son of God. Does he represent the Son of God? And it's it's incredible. I better I better continue on this because if we go to John one, um, we read that he gave power. I do believe that word power. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So this is only referring to popes. It's not referring to you. So you gotta. Trust the Pope. Is that what this is saying? Not at all. Not at all. We are the sons of God. So does the Pope represent the Son of God? All right. Well, the Pope is a word that means Father or the Holy Father. Not just Father, but Holy Father. So what's the Bible say about calling somebody Father? And I think it says something. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. All right. So it's right there in Matthew 23, one verse before Matthew 24, when Jesus warns us about being deceived and about Antichrist. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Call no man your father, yet the Pope is a word that means Papa, which means Holy Father. So if you trust the Pope, you believe he is the Father of all. Father of heaven and the Father of earth, the representative. And uh, to me, that's uh, crazy. I'll put it nicely. But he, like Jesus says, he deceives the whole world. All right, so I want to get further into this, but I'll have to do another video. And it's interesting because this guy does exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So I want to fill, uh, further illustrate that, if you will, in the next video.